unity. It comes from harmony. And harmony is the strength of support of all institutions. Without unity, resources are wasted. Efforts are thwarted. Actions are duplicated. With unity comes added energy, increased resources, and doubled, not duplicated, efforts. It doesn't seem possible today, six years into the new millennium, that we'll be still stressing the need for unity. But that's the topic of my speech, unity. We need it, we won't exceed without it. And we better build it now, because tomorrow may be too late. Unity is necessary for success. And ladies and gentlemen, it does not exist in the fetish community. Not yet. Oh, be sure, there's a few organizations like this one, you people here in this room, the Leather Archives Museum, International Mr. and Ms. Leathers, the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom, who encourage and include a diverse membership. But those organizations, these organizations, are few and far behind. For the most part, the BDS and leather fetish people of the world stay firmly entrenched in their own little communities, oblivious to each other, almost oblivious to themselves. Historically, one's appetite for kink, kinky behavior, fetishes and desires were held close to the belt. We didn't advertise our fantasies, we hid them, they were private. Even our privates were private. <laughs> well, so now that's changed. Well, not really. Not for the vast majority of kinky people, but for many of us that's changed. We're no longer afraid. We're no longer hidden. When a sexual revolution kicked open the closet door, it couldn't help reveal all the things that people are doing. Turns out there are a lot of homosexuals out there. A lot of swingers, too. And there were a whole lot of people doing things that scared the hell out of the average Mr. and Mr. America. Kink. Kink isn't new. The museum and archives have implements of fetish lifestyle the back to the turn of the century. We'd like to have an exhibit that would see the fetish of Victorian Europe or ancient Rome. History tells us they exist. No, kink isn't new. And it wasn't new in the 1960s when the closet doors were open and the rest of the population got an eyeful. Kink wasn't new, just newly discovered by mainstream Pollyanna population. Despite popular myth, it isn't really easy to spot homosexual. Swingers pretty much blend in. But a man, much more a woman in leather, let's face it, kink stands out. It makes an easy target. And because it is seen as a fringe element, in a fringe element is often the easiest to attack. Local prosecutors and small time politicians find it easy to hijack headlines and produce publicity by prosecuting, persecuting those deemed least likely to fight back. Because we are outside the mainstream, who is coming to our fence? Just a minute ago, I said kink wasn't new. Well, persecuting kink isn't new either. With the rise of the right wing here in America and across the Atlantic, the prosecution rose to a new level. Conservative state and even federal officials began to legislate family values. The problem is, it was their definition of family values. Things came to a boil in the 1990s with a series of high-profile prosecutions, which included a new and frightening twist. Despite gains in civil rights and privacy, despite the decriminalization of consensual sex, to fight the AIDS of gay lips, women's lips, and all the other lips, the state was still prosecuting S&M. Only now, they were saying consent was not a defense. In 1997, the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom was founded in the United States and began to spearhead the political, legal, and social efforts on the behalf of sane, sane, and consensual sex. To date, the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom has done a lot. So I don't want to sound like I'm saying we're not successful. Still, clearly, we have not succeeded. Not yet. What do I mean by that? 
Go out and take a poll. Go out and ask all the different kinky people you can find. Talk to the bondage people, the SM groups, and all those categories. Go ask the swingers, the swappers, and every kinky person you can find. And the vast majority, overwhelmingly, will not know who Oliver Javanik is. They will not know who, what the Spanish Trust is. They will not know what the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom is, or what they do and why they are so necessary. Despite all of these results, they just tell us the coalition has not yet succeeded. I want to consider the rest of the polling place results. Some of the people did know who Germanic were, and the Spanner Trust was. They probably also know or heard of the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom. These people are the socially and politically active members of the DBSM fetish communities. They are the movers and shakers and our leaders. These are the people who support our individual fetish organizations, the one who attend our convention and events. These are the kinky people in the know. Look at the response to your questions, and my money says that gay people recognize the Spanner Trust. Straight people heard of Jovanic. There is very little unity between any fraction of the straight and gay community, and very little unity between men and women, especially when it comes to alternate sex. Now, in the LBG communities, all of them the little men and women, the fittest communities is the most organized. We've been at the forefront of the AIDS, HIV efforts. When I was talking about the movers and shakers of this community, those active and educated, I was talking about you, right here in this room. You, we, are the people who need to reach. We are the people who are going to bring unity to the table. We represent the organizations who, for the most part, are already promoting unity. Now it's time to work harder. You've got to go back to your communities. You need to reach out. Let everybody know that kink transcends sexuality. Kink transcends sex, race, and nationality. You need to encourage your communication, to reach across the boundaries. Gay clubs, reach out to the straight clubs back home. Plan a group event, a joint party. Exchange speakers or educational programs. Make sure those other groups know about the existence of the Leather Archives and Museum, their museum, our museum. And make sure those organizations become members of the National Coalition for Sexual Freedom, who's fighting for our rights. And do not stop at the straight and kinky groups. Men's groups need to approach women's groups. Our fetish has to reach out to the next. You, each of you, must work to unify. Do not stop at the kinky people. The truth is that all of our issues are gay issues, all of our issues are straight issues. They're the same issues that face blacks, Asians, male and female communities. Freedom is freedom. And the rights of consenting adults are the rights of all consenting adults. We have been and are fighting for the rights of consenting adults to consent. Our victories are their victories. Remember that old quote about the Nazis? You know, when they came for the homosexuals, I didn't stand up, I wasn't a homosexual. When they came for the trade unionists, I didn't stand up, I was a trade unionist. When they finally came for me, there's nobody left to stand up. Well, I want you all to stand up right now. I'm serious. Stand up. Now, look around the room. Look around. This is what unity looks like. And this is what you have to make it look like back home. You need to go back and mix colors and genders, sexuality and different forms of king. Each of your organization can reach out to another. The youth community, the fetish community needs to unify. And you are the people that can make it happen. You can see that it happens. You can do it. You can go back home and make sure your organizations can do it. You can cause unification. Thank you. You're my speech. I love you all.